I'm your host with the most local 23 doing his chapter 4. It's been two days since the dinner party ended where all hell broke loose. Surprisingly, your most trusted friend over there turned out to be Kyle. Tammy has been avoiding you ever since you caught her making out with your boyfriend, Dustin. Since then, Dustin hasn't stopped calling you. However, you have repeatedly chosen to ignore his calls. You are laying in your bed on your computer reading some supernatural fanfic. Suddenly, you hear two people arguing and yelling at each other outside of your bedroom window. Jeez, who's yelling like that? I should ignore it. Wait, I recognize those voices. It's Kyle and Sierra. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I shouldn't be listening to this. Your, but your headphones and drown out Kyle and Sierra's voices. A few hours later, you head outside and notice Kyle sitting by himself in the front yard. Hi, Kyle. Did you hear that? Yeah, you guys were pretty loud. I'm pretty sure the whole neighborhood heard you. Sorry about that. I, I think I made it pretty clear we broke up. Too bad she took it that way. It didn't have to end up like that. Girls will be girls. <laughs> yeah, um, I was thinking. Well, to forgive myself of the disturbance here, and I put you on, on your front yard, would you like to go grab a bite with me? Mm, sounds good, let's go. I've been cooped up in my room forever anyway. Yeah, I noticed. Okay, first, let's get some ground rules down. Don't worry, I'm not looking at this like a date. That would be kind of messed up regarding... I just broke up with Sierra. I thought maybe you could show me a good place to eat in town. Okay, but you'll have to drive. I don't have a car, and don't expect me to ride on the motorcycle. It's okay, I have a car too. I'll go pick it up now. Meet me here in 15 minutes. A few minutes later, Kyle pulls around in a beautiful metallic blue convertible with a white stripe down the middle. Okay, I don't know anything about cars, but I know what I like, and I like this car. Yeah, she's not bad, is she? She's beautiful. Yeah, she certainly is. As you look up, you find Kyle staring directly into your eyes. So, um, what kind of car is this? It's a 1968 Shelby GT350 convertible, and don't let her good looks fool you, this baby flies. So what? Are you going to tell me it's going to go from 0 to 60 in 10 seconds? No, because it could do that in 6 seconds. By 10 seconds, it would be going 80. Well, there's really no reason to drive that fast, is there? One day, I'll open her up for you, and we'll see if you feel the same way. Oh, why not today? Are you checking? No, but don't be silly. We're in the suburbs. So, you coming or what? Where are we off to? William Street Cafe. I know where that is. I've passed it a, in front of a, a few times. Any good recommendations? The milkshakes. Best milkshakes in town. We'll have to see about that. The drive off as Kyle pushes the accelerator. Halfway forward, a few minutes later, you walk into the William Street Cafe where everyone is torn between looking at you and Kyle or his convertible parked on the front spot of the cafe. I must admit, it's nice to get those stairs. I could almost feel like a movie star. When you sit down at a table in the corner, Kyle stares right at you. His handsome and charming looks make you blush. Are you going to pretend you're not hungry or you just... Are you going to actually eat something? I'll, uh... I'll get a milkshake. You, they really must be the milkshakes in town if you can't turn one up. They are. So, what's your favorite milkshake flavor? Strawberry. All the way. The others are just too classic or lame or too original. Like, they have the chocolate cherry milkshake. You do not want to try it out. Sounds about right. What do you say? Or why do you say that? Well, I was thinking, strawberry is sweet and sexy, and it makes your body tingle, just like you. Oh. So, which kind of flavor do you like? I'm rich, decadent, and a little bit dangerous, so 
I guess that's why I like the Chikla one. Wow, Kyle, you even managed to turn our milkshakes into something sexual. I think you really have a problem. I wouldn't call it a problem, more like I speak my mind. Just because you speak it doesn't mean people want to listen to it. Kyle laughs wholeheartedly. You feel a mix of emotion, of embarrassment, and amusement around you. Why are you laughing so hard? Now people are looking at us not in the way they used to and they saw us arrive in the convertible. Now they think we're just creeps. Sorry, but you say some funny things, you know that? I never made anyone laugh like that before. Well, maybe not everyone gets you. He's actually kind of sweet, and he's right. No one really does get me. All of a sudden, Dustin walks in the cafe and walks straight for your table. Oh. Don't look now, but here comes Dustin. Oh no, he's coming here. You want me to get rid of him? No, he's been calling me all week, and it's time I put an end to this. Alright, I'll be here. I appreciate it. I might need the help. Of course. Just stay silent unless I really need you. Kyle zips his lips with an imaginary zipper and throws away an imaginary key. In the meantime, Dustin approaches you with a full head of steam. Is this why you're avoiding me, my calls? Because you're out with this guy? No, I'm not taking your calls because I have nothing to say to you. And why not? Because the last time I saw you, you were making out with my sister, you idiot. And when the cafe turns and looks over, Dustin becomes extremely embarrassed. Kelly, I was drunk! That's no excuse, dude. That doesn't give you an excuse. And also, should I forget the part where you came to my house drunk, put your hands on me, you even tried to rape me, you son of a bitch. I didn't put my hands on you! Well, I guess you forgot about that, too. You're probably still too drunk to remember that. I can smell the cheap booze off you. You're acting crazy and making tough stuff. Dustin, listen to me. I never want to see you again. We are over. Callie, don't be an idiot. Girls don't dump me. I dump them. Hey, uh, Dick. She says she's done with you. That's your cue to leave. Oh, and who are you now? Her boyfriend? Exactly. Wait, what? Well, that was unexpected. Like I'm scared of you. You should be. You wouldn't be the first jerk I have to kick his ass out. Dustin takes a swing at Kyle, but he rapidly catches his fist and squeezes him. Dustin falls to his knees upon Kyle's squeeze. What do you want me to do? Mmm, kiss me for just <laughs> I want you to throw him out with the trash. I never want to see this garbage like him again. Screw you, Kelly! I believe you tried the last time, yet you failed. Now I'm gonna make you learn a lesson or two. Kyle twists Dustin's arm behind his back, walks him towards the exit, and throws him into the garbage. You get close to her again. I make you a promise that next time you touch her, you will walk away without your a broken leg. You got it? Dustin stands back up, spits on the ground, and walks away. Aww. When Kyle walks back to you, a cheerful applause is heard in the cafe. Are you okay? I was just about to ask you the same thing. I'm sorry I had to go through this mess with Dustin. I never should have taken you at this cafe. You didn't bring me here. I did. I think we should leave. I'm not in the mood to stay here. I'll give you a ride home. Actually, I think I would prefer walking home. I want to be alone. We don't know where Dustin is. It might not be safe. Trust me, he won't come within a mile of me anymore. That's good to hear. Thanks for sticking up for me again. Not many people do that. Of course, after all, I am your knight. 
When you finally walk back to your house, you find Tammy snooping around your room. What are you doing in my room? I'm looking for my hot pink miniskirt. I know you hid it somewhere. Gross. I wouldn't wear that skank outfit. Don't call me a skank! Well, I mean, if your clothes don't fit anymore, it might have been because you gained a bit of weight. Happens to the best of us, and, uh, the worst of us. You really got a bad attitude, Callie. Well, you are a low life, need to get out of my room, or a slut. If I wanted to wear your clothes, I'd go to the local hooker thrift store. How dare you talk to me like that? Well, I learned my dirty mouth from the best. Thank you for that. I mean, the only thing you ever taught me is how to be unladylike. What's wrong with you? I'm... Um... There might be a few things wrong with me. Uh, specifically you and the mother. But I digress. You, Tammy. You freaking jammed your tongue down my boyfriend's throat. Isn't that a good enough reason for me to be angry? Well, someone had to. He told me how you wouldn't want to do anything for him. You could have at least blown him once in a while. R really? Like, that's a reason to cheat? <sighs> I guess I have too much respect for myself. Now get out of my room. As soon as you give me my pink miniskirt! It's not in here, you idiot. Or else I would have already kicked you out along with it a long time ago. Anyway, Mom washed it yesterday. I saw it in the laundry. Tammy storms up. Damn. Part of me feels bad, but I'm still upset about Tammy. What? No, no, why do you feel bad? Screw her. I just don't know how we even got to this point. She used to be my best friend. I mean, she's still my sister. Maybe I should go apologize. All of a sudden, you hear Tammy and Mom's voices in the living room. Mom, I can't stand it anymore. Kelly's such a brat. <sighs> what did she do this time? She's been stealing my clothes and calling me names. Your sister has always been so... Entitled. It's because your father spoils her. What? I don't have to listen to this. I'm going to... Okay. I'm so sick of them... Of hearing them gang up on me. I thought there was going to be an option. It was just, I'm going to and dot dot dot, and then it was next. Okay. You put on your headphones on. Turn up the music really loud. Drowning out your mom and Tammy's voices. Suddenly your mom smashes your door and comes in extremely pissed. This has gone on long enough, Callie. You're grounded for the rest of the summer. Do you have anything to say for yourself? Why would it matter? You won't listen anyway. Because all you say are lies and dirty words. I never raised you like that. Your mom slams the door, leaving you alone once again. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you. Around a week has passed since you've been grounded your room, prohibited from television, phone, and social life. All there is, is boredom. All of a sudden, someone knocks at your door. I'm busy being grounded. That's a shame. That must be why I haven't seen you. How did you get in? Who's at your door? Could it be Dustin? Could it be Kyle? Could it be the mysterious new intruder? Find out in the next chapter. I'm mysterious yet. Yeah, new intruder. Yeah, okay. Who? Uh, that's why I haven't seen you. Uh, I'm the neighbor two doors down. <laughs> Every day you come outside, I stalk you. That literally is a neighbor of mine. Every time I walk outside, it's like, Hi, I'm going to come outside and watch everything you're doing. Like, literally the whole neighborhood doesn't do anything when they're home. It's, it's sad because everyone does everything in their backyard because you're just so nosy, but I digress. Uh, with that being said, I hope y'all did enjoy the video. Tons more content to come. Let me know in the comment section below if you did enjoy it. What do you think is going to happen next and whatnot otherwise? Feel free to head down to the description below. You can follow me on social media, or there are some links to support my content if you'd like to do so. Otherwise, hit that share and subscribe button, and until next time, stay well, stay awesome, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.